There is a lot of talking about how you can grow your channel on YouTube, advices and analytics on how the algorithm works with tabs and keywords and thumbnails and a whole other stuff. Well, let me tell you this. Someone in Latin America uploaded yesterday a camera rip of the Broly film. Within one day, that video got 5 million views and that channel gained 30,000 subs. That's how you grow your channel. Obviously, the video will eventually be taken down, most of the subs are going to be dead, and you're not gonna get that many views afterwards. But in case you wanna be a draggable dick rider channel, you just got yourself tens of thousands of possible followers with a simple camera rip. Even if a tenth of them stick around, you will still have several thousands of subscribers right away without trying. That's how you grow your channel. Not with quality content, pretty colors, good editing or whatever. Just take your camera to the cinema and illegally film the latest trending movie. That's how fair a life really is. And because this video came out short, here is something relevant from a panel I went to during Yumacan a few years back. General tags like hilarious, funny, uh, comedy, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay. That are, these are things people are searching for regularly, and so that the more you are closer to those titles and those type of things, the more people will find you randomly. So if you learn how to SEO your videos correctly, you'll be able to, you'll be able to get found a lot faster than normal. Also, follow trending topics. If you can get on top of trending topics as quick as possible, you can get a video that will hit like 40,000 a day when your average might be 200. Like, All right, wish. Right. Let me get that right. right. So top of the sandwich is the topic. The bottom of the sandwich are the adjectives. What's in the middle? What's so, the meat? So I came, with, <laughs> I came up with the idea because I was like just watching how it works. Uh, so it's your name. So because your videos are tied to each other mm -hmm. and the related videos. So if your video your name is first, suggested video will be yours, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next part of it is the very specific content, so those, you know, the long tail keywords. That's the meat. And then the bottom of the sandwich is the more generous. You said you're studying tags. And, uh, um, a lot of people don't know there's actually a lot of good analytic tools out there, um, like TubeBuddy and uh, Bidouli. Which one did you use? VidIQ. Yeah, I use VidIQ too. Vid VidIQ. Yeah. It's really cool. It tells you a lot, a lot of data about the keywords. Like if people are even searching for that keyword. So show you like exactly. I never use them, by the way. Based on like certain keywords, where we were like. You might be like ranking five or whatever, the funny tag or whatever. Some people search funny, your video is probably going to, uh, along with other metrics and stuff, it's more likely to search like fifth in the YouTube yeah. search list. So one thing I found out recently was I do, uh, every week I do recaps of Pokemon Generations, and I figured out that I am ranking number two for Pokemon Generations Review, but no one's looking for that. Everyone's looking for reactions. So my next video that followed up, I changed it to reactions, and I started ranking number three for that, and that video got the double views. Mm. All right. So you kind of like look and see what the metrics are. Yeah, SEO is very, very hard to figure out, and it takes a lot of practice and just sort of fumbling around with, you know, trying new ideas with your channel and everything like that. Um, and it changes all the time. The yeah. um, algorithms on YouTube change all the time. If you want to learn about that, spend a good $500 and go do like VidCon or, or, or get one of their little YouTube certifications, which is really tough to get. Buy your own views and be done with it. Get one of those, but then you get, you get renewed next year when they change everything. <laughs> Um, so let's ask the same question to you guys. How do you get your name out there? Um, well, as far as like the Twitch stuff, it, it took a while for me to get my stuff. Like, I guess this is more catered to Twitch stuff, but I guess it goes the same with YouTube and stuff. I've been I've been pretty much streaming for about eight years this year, and only in the past couple of years I really got uh, really noticed. I guess it's about just like having like sort of like trying to cultivate like a community, I guess, based around your channel. Like, you're gonna like. Starting off, you're not going to have too many viewers, but you're going to have like a lot of, like, you're going to have like maybe like 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 viewers who are going to be like really dedicate, dedicate to your content. And so I think it's important to sort of interact with them as much as possible so that like they will I do that. be like, hey, you know, this guy, you know, he's a small YouTuber or whatever, but he has like a really sort of friendly and welcoming community. You should probably check him out sometime. And it starts getting from there and there. And, you know, that's sort of a disadvantage too of having like a larger YouTube channel. It's harder to be like close to a lot of your viewers, but. You can still sort of work with it. I would say, like, trying to create a friendly, open environment with your channel is something really, really important to do. Have anything? I think, I think a big thing that a lot of people don't consider is um, collaborations. And working with people. Ah, uh, big bugging. I hate that. Huge, easy, quick way to get bulk views. Um, you're not going to establish a fan base by working with people unless you become a regular part of that content creation or of that group. But you can easily grab at people who want to see like like-minded content or content in that same vein. For example, if you work with someone who already has all those views coming in or has that fan base, so if you can kind of work yourself into the community or 
we're trying to just talk to people or figure out what people are organizing you know, the content you want to create and then get an audience that way, then you'll kind of get those stragglers that want to continue seeing stuff personally from you or watching things that you're creating or you're doing personally. I've found a lot of success in that myself. And then once they get adapted to your own style, it's easy to get a consistent audience that wants more of you, more of your stuff, more of what you're creating as related to what they were trying to tell. Yeah, and then eventually you'll start establishing your own brand based on like, they might know you as like ex YouTubers, just friend or whatever, starting off. But then over time, they'll see, oh, this guy actually pushes out really good content. They're more than just sort of the sidekick person. They're actually like a, like a really good person on their own. And yeah, that's something that's kind of hard to establish for at first, but once you start pushing out more and more of your own content, it's really easy to sort of get your name out there after that. I mean, you've probably noticed in like bigger YouTube videos of like personalities where when they bring in other people, if they do really well, there will be all those comments with all those thumbs like, oh, I love this guy, or oh, he's hilarious, or he's the one, or bring him in for more and more yeah. stuff. And those people are going to be paying attention and watching. And if you can get it to them go, hey, I'm doing this, then you have that whole audience that's going to migrate over to what you're doing. Right. So it's, it's just kind of you know establishing your own thing out of working yourself into what's already going on. In that same vein, I'll say, um, even if you're small, like, don't be afraid to write, like, the YouTubers that you know, like, letters, like, or even just people on uh, Twitter or something like that, because I've gotten, like, people who are way bigger to work with me on YouTube, so I was sending, like, sending, like, a simple, like, letter to them, and they were like, yeah, I'll do a video with you, whatever, and, like, like it was uh, with the Anime Man, Boogie 2098, uh, a few other yeah. people I know, like, personally. Now, because of that, just being like, you know what, I have 300 subscribers at the point, that's when I did it. And they're like, okay, you seem like a really nice guy, I'll help you out. So just be, like, willing to take that chance, because the worst thing they'll do is ignore Yeah, and you never know, they might make cameos in their little movies that only get seen at three different screenings. That's how I got uh, Alana, uh, the um, overly obsessed girlfriend, and Mr. Guitar Man, and couple other people. Um, but it is hard. You can't just go like, I'm going to grab this big YouTuber. It doesn't always work. So a lot of times you do want to work with people within the same subscriber range as well. And uh, good research for that is uh, Social Blade. Um, that's another great analytic tool. Uh, it likes to get in out that. Well, I would say be on different platforms and like using tags. Like I'll be on Instagram like, okay, so I, I'm crazy and I do too many things at once and that's why I feel like I crash and burn whenever I try something. So I'm like, I'll try to do YouTube. Well, you're and then, supposed to. You're supposed to experiment oh everything. YouTube <laughs> became my resume. I, I, my day job is video. My day job is audio video production, you know, and I do it. And YouTube has been my resume. Yeah. But like, so like around the only thing I'm doing. I start to do more like cosplay stuff now. Like I post in, post on Instagram and do a lot of tags on there. On Twitter, you can actually use tags on Facebook. And then if people say find you through your cosplay stuff, and then when time time would be over, like oh you do videos now too, and then people might be because they will like your cosplays, like oh maybe I'll watch your videos and stuff. And then like I went on Twitch, and then like some people who found me then on Twitch would go to my other social media and start to build up that way. So being on multiple platforms and just trying to experiment, like some people may like you better on one platform and the other, so just try to find a balance and just mix that around. Because like, I actually, when I was streaming a lot on Twitch, it, it was growing pretty well for what, at least what I thought I was doing on there, so yeah. So just like, just be on different platforms. Don't stick to just one thing, because some people may not be on a certain platform. Like there are people that, because they hate the algorithm of Facebook, they won't be on Facebook, so yeah. The only thing I have to add to that, um, and we've already hit it several times, networking, networking, networking. The, you know, hey, this is what I do. Oh, that's what you do. Let me go check you out. Let, let, let's work together. Maybe we'll do a panel where we make fun of Z kids, or are you guys talking about? <laughs> Don't ever make fun of Z kids. <laughs> All right. I am Peter Malusis, also known as that Anim Snob, and I want to ask, how much being negative in your videos or going against the public opinion affects the growth of your channel? Ooh, I got them there. <laughs> I do think that if you're really negative go against the opinion of what your fans is okay, people will leave. I have definitely made videos because I've learned to just kind of do like really strong rants because I'm like, this is how I feel about it. People were like, nope, unsub, nope, I'm out. No, nope. because they want people, most people want someone that's like-minded to them because people are very self-centered on like, leaving YouTube. So Fucking kind of, relatable. It is it's true. Yeah, it's just those that. So, but I want, but I watch people who like, who like, or think like me, or like excited about things I get excited about. Then it's me, just excited. If they went on and like, oh, Pokemon sucks, I would get angry and I would leave their channel immediately. <laughs> <laughs> You have to think if you are more interested in getting the views for being negative 
Or if you do want to just have a positive channel, it depends. I feel like a lot of times some people who do try to be negative on purpose just do it for views. So they might just get a reputation of being like a troll or being negative yes. or bad. Yes. So you, you have to like think, you know, is having a good reputation, is having a bad reputation and having people think negatively of you a lot, if you're always negative, always angry, like legitimately you know, <laughs> person, more important than like, you know, are the views worth it? And I did know a guy that actually made a YouTube living off of being negative and putting things out there that he knew people wouldn't like. Um, I would not recommend following his example and he would, you know, get so much hate he would delete videos but then he would come back. Although I really liked this video that he did titled Minecraft Sucks. It was a, a self-produced <laughs> song with a very bad beat, but it was really catchy. And he got rid of that, and he thankfully disappeared into the night, and I hopefully by saying I don't plan name, to do that. It's not very long, so I'm not going to say his name. It's important that that opinion is something you very truly feel and are ready to defend, because I think what a lot of viewers want out of their of the people they watch are honesty, transparency, and they will just want to be able to enjoy their content. And if you, if this is something you feel very, very strongly about and you know it's going to get a negative reception, put it out anyway. Because people like to know more about the people that they watch, and so if, even if they don't agree with it, the people who are really true to you as fans are going to stay with you. And they're going to say, you know, maybe I don't really agree with this guy, maybe I don't want to watch his video on this topic or whatever, but I can respect that he has such a strong view about this, and I think that's something to definitely keep in mind. The internet is shallow and petty, it takes everything at face value, and it's just flat and what you see is what you get, period. If you make content or videos that go against, uh, excuse me, against the popular opinion at the end of the day, no matter what, almost guaranteed you are going to lose followers or views or attention. But the thing is that if the content you're making in that stance is worthwhile enough or true to what you want to make enough or actually hits your target audience hard enough, then you can bounce back and grab far more attention that way than you would have if you just, you know, didn't say what you wanted to say about the issue or made what you didn't want to make on it. Um, it's, it's fighting an uphill battle at all times, but you can come out even stronger if you do it right. And if you really stick to yourself or do something worthwhile on it. Now, were you talking about talking as yourself? Or were you talking about maybe using a character? Because a lot of people, you know, will use characters or, or inside of a sketch. Um, is, is that what you're thinking about? Like maybe it's, a, it's half and half. What I talk about in my videos, which are usually negative, is indeed playing a persona, but I do believe whatever I'm saying, I'm just making them being extreme, like I make it sound like it's a lot more negative than it actually is, because I want them to react in the comments, so they will have an actual debate going on instead of having a circle jerk going on. <laughs> I like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would try to make it clear that you're a character at some point, even if it's not in the same video, so people can relate. But yeah, absolutely. But it sounds like you know what you're doing. It's working for you. Yeah. Be entertaining above anything else. Yeah. Don't just whine. Don't just be like, I am so cool because I hate this. <laughs> like, do what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, be entertaining a personality. Don't just do it for the sake of doing it. Yeah, people love hyperbole too. They love seeing people react so extremely. So having a character that uh, that sort of nurtures that a little bit that that is that is a that's a brilliant yeah. idea and definitely keep that up. Basically. Good, good. I keep doing it then. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah if it works for you, man, just do it. It works for me so far. <laughs> yeah. I dislike everything. That. <laughs> so where you just you, all your videos are like Pokemon is garbage and you Twitch is bad. And video games are terrible. But then let's say you go, oh wait, I like this thing, and you want to make a video on it. No one's gonna care. No one's gonna want to hear your actual opinion on it. Yes, they're gonna want that. Like ah, you, but you don't like this. You, your channel's being crazy. Like yeah, your channel is. Why would you like this? How could you like this? Why don't you tear it apart? Or oh, you're or, dumb. Or, what would be interesting though is like if you establish yourself as that for like so long, but then you put out the video that's like I like this, yeah, and then watch that blow up. <laughs> so basically, so mind game. Yeah, you do yeah. it. Yeah, mind game your audience. Mind game your audience. <laughs> the craftier and trickier you are, <laughs> and the more underhanded practices you take. Just be genuine. At the end of the day, don't try and fake stuff or anything because people will know. People won't like it. It doesn't. Work. And 
and have some of your own personality. Don't be like, oh, I'm gonna, oh, this guy has a great example. I'm just gonna do what they're doing. Make sure it's you in the end of the day that it's something that you want to do. Don't just don't copy someone else because that person already exists. You're, you know, be you.